What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to a new video. So I'm super excited about this because I believe it's going to help a lot of you guys out. Recently I've had quite a few messages on Twitter and Instagram about people who I guess in the same situation I was where they want better and they want to do something but they're not quite sure what to do. So they don't know what product to sell or what niche to go into or how to set up their store. So thought why not do a series where I show you guys the whole process from start to finish, starting a new store completely from scratch. So how to choose and find a product, how to build your store, how to market it using Facebook ads and Instagram, and then finally all the way up to making your first sale and how to manage the after sales process. Now there's gonna be loads of content to cover, so it's probably gonna be split into four or five different parts, today being part one. Now. Because there is so much to cover, I'm not going to go into super, super detail on each and every step. It's going to be more of an overview and a guideline, just so you guys can get a feel for how the process works, basically. But if you do want me to cover something particular in more detail, then I can always do a video just on that topic. So leave a comment below. Let me know if there is something you want me to do a video on. Um, and in the same way, if you've got any questions now... I'm only a small YouTube channel, so I do answer every comment myself personally. So if you've got one question, then comment below, or five questions, comment below. Even if you've got 20 questions, just comment them below one by one, and I will answer them all personally. Um, that being said, we'll move to step one. In fact, just before we do that, I just want to show you guys the free ebooks. I've put them together, I made them myself. Um, if you are just starting out, then they will be super beneficial. Just check the description down. Below, uh, the whoa! You check the check the description down below. You'll see there's a free there's a section called free ebooks. There's three different ones, completely free. All you have to do is put your email in, and you can download them. They've been getting a lot of good feedback recently, so check them out and let me know what you think. Step one, then, guys, choosing a niche and product. So probably the step that most people struggle with when they first start. I've put this before even creating your store, just because when you first sign up to Shopify, you'll get a free 14 day trial. So don't waste those days doing your product research. Make sure you've got everything in place first. So when you do finally start your account, then you can just get to action straight away, adding your products, building your store, doing your Facebook ads, and just get selling as soon as possible. So point one then, goals and branding. Now, very important to put some thought into this before you get started. You need to know why you're doing this and what your goal is, because without a goal and a roadmap, it I mean, your roadmap might not always go to plan, but it always helps to have some sort of guide or objective that you're working towards. So, for example, you might be doing this to make a couple extra hundred pounds a month, or you might be doing this to make loads of money, and it might be a five, ten year thing for you, in which case there's certain things that you'll do differently. For example, you'll hear other YouTubers talk about this as well, that the key to longevity with dropshipping is creating a brand. So if that's your plan and you want to do this long term, then there's certain things that you want to do from the very offset. So you want your social media pages in place and posting every day on those. You want to start a blog. You want to create custom audiences with Facebook ads and do retargeting ads. You want to be collecting customer emails and doing emails marketing sequences. So just put some thought into this of why you're doing it and how you're going to get there. Moving on then, step two personal interests, knowledge and past experiences. So when people say what product should I sell or what niche I should go into, then I always ask them what their personal interests are or what subjects they have a good knowledge about. Just because the more knowledge you have of a subject and the people that are within that market, the better, under the better you understand your customer and the psychology of why they buy something within that niche, then just the easier, you'll find it so, so, so much easier to sell to that person if you understand why they buy it. So for this series, we're gonna be starting with a general store. When I first started, I started with a general store. A general store being a store that sells products from lots of different niches. Now, there are advantages and disadvantages, but for people starting out, then it's definitely the best way to go because you can afford to test lots of different products within lots of different niches. Whereas if you choose and get your heart set on a certain niche, so let's say for example, 
you want to go into the dog niche and you spend all this time building a great looking store around dogs and then you find out that you can't sell within that niche because it's too competitive so you've wasted all that time building that store whereas with a general one you can get away testing lots of different products and then what you do when you find a winning product you then take that product take it to a different store and start building your niche store and that's when you start building your brand and expanding so the best way to start is just write a list get a pen and paper or do it online like i have and just write down all your hobbies and interests and past experiences and just the things you find yourself doing in your spare time so i'll go through these all one by one just try and explain why they're relevant to me and why that makes them a relevant niche for me to go into. Hopefully you guys will then be able to kind of gather an understanding of why I've picked them and hopefully then give you guys ideas of niches that you personally should go into. So golf then, I've played golf for many years. I've got friends that are golfers. I see what they spend their money on and I know why they're spending their money on it. The key here is to understand the why if you can understand why someone wants to spend their money then you'll just you'll find it so much easier xbox then same as everyone else right now i'm playing fortnite again i've got friends that play xbox i see what they spend their money on within that niche and i know why they're spending their money on it cars absolutely love cars my technical knowledge of them isn't great i don't necessarily hang around with people that are into cars so my understanding of that niche in terms of what products people buy just isn't there so i'd probably avoid that travel absolutely love to travel love going to new countries i know what it's like to sit on a plane for 12 hours or be on a boat for four hours so again i understand what products people that travel a lot would buy and why they would buy them now past experiences the reason i put this on there is just because you might not be going through this situation now, but if you've been through it before, then chances are your understanding of the why will be there. So for example, I went to uni for two years. I was a student, I lived with students, had friends that were students, and I know what students spend their money on, and again, why they're spending their money on it. The key point here to take away is just the better you understand your audience, then the easier you're going to find it. If you can understand the psychology behind the why, then you can sell anything to anyone. Product research then, guys. I've got four points down here. They're not set in stone. They're not rules. They're just things to consider when doing your product research. So up to £50 then. Now, this relates closely to your branding. When you first get started, no one's gonna know who you are. They won't have seen you before and they definitely won't have been on your site before. You'll have no product reviews. So people will be skeptical about spending money with you. And the higher your product costs, then the lower your conversion rate is gonna be. Unless you've got a big budget to start with, so anything over 500 pound, then try and keep it below that 50 pound mark. The way I look at it is, find what I call a hook product or an impulse buy product. Impulse is, an impulse product is a product that is in a 10 to 20 pound range. People see it, they want it and they buy it there and then they don't go into the market to find a cheaper one or they don't do their research on it. They just see it, they want it and they buy it there and then. And once you have them on, that, on your website, adding to cart, putting the payment details in, then that is when you can do your upsells or your email marketing. Moving on then, 30, 30, 30 rule. Again, as it says in brackets, it's only a guideline. If you've never been involved in e-com before, then you might be thinking, how much money should I be spending on Facebook ads or how much profit should I make? What should my margin be? So 30, 30, 30 rule is then 30% on your product cost, 30% on your marketing budget, and then 30% profit. Max four weeks shipping. We're drop shipping. It's going to take weeks, not days before the customer gets it. Anything over four weeks, I usually find four weeks is the sweet spot. Um, anything over that though, you're going to get PayPal disputes and you're going to get emails from annoyed customers. Keep it as short as you can. On AliExpress, the best choice going to the UK is always ePacket because it's always tracked. You get a tracking code and I usually find that it takes max three weeks. This last point then, non-electrical, hazardous, offensive. Just keep it simple. Don't choose 
something that plugs into the wall or a samurai sword or nunchucks or anything health related that people have to eat or put on their skin. It's just when you're first getting started, just play it safe. Moving on then guys, Amazon, Wish.com, AliExpress. So these are the three websites we're going to use to do our product research. There's others you can use, but you don't need them. Keep it simple. Stick with these three. They're all you're going to need. So the way we go about it is we're going to use Wish.com and AliExpress to begin with. This is where we're going to get our product ideas from. So go back to your hobbies and interests list. Take the thing that's at the top. So we've got golf and we'll just put it in the search bar of each website. And this is going to give us a general feel of the types of products within that market. So just remember when you're scrolling through, keep these four points in mind. So we can see straight away 95, 97, way too expensive, complete no go. We'll keep going. Now this jumps out at me, this little grooving tool here. I've actually got one of these myself. And now guys, this is where it comes back to understanding your audience and the why behind they would buy. I know for a fact people will pay 15 pound for this. The casual golfer who's been playing golf for 10, 15 years they don't want to buy a new set of clubs every two to three years. A new set of golf clubs can cost up to two, three grand. So why would they want to do that when they can spend 15 pound on a tool like this, they can sharpen the grooves of their club head and they'll get that new club effect without dishing out two, three grand for a new set of clubs. They can have that new club effect every round if they want for only 15 pounds. So that's our why. Why would someone buy this? To save them money. And people love saving money. So ideal product straight away. We can go into Amazon, see what it's selling there. So it's a groove sharpener. If I can spell it right. It still didn't spell it right. So we can see straight away, £7, £5, £10, £2.23. That's a different one, probably coming direct from China five pound so if we compare that to the 30 30 30 rule in fact we'll click on this see how much shipping is going to be hopefully they've got e-packet we'll take a gold one e-packet so 440 if they're going on amazon anywhere from six to ten pounds so it doesn't fit that 30 30 30 rule but it does fit the hook product slash impulse product range which is 10 to 20 pound i know for a fact that people will see this if they've if the casual golfer isn't going to be aware of a tool like this if they see this and see it's only 15 pound they're just going to buy it there and then so straight away ideal product um, we can go back to wish.com we'll do the same thing start scrolling through um, we can see here products like this very cheap but again uh, there's not a lot of margin on them you can buy them for four pounds in the uk um and, and we've got the same products here over a thousand plus bought this so we know they're selling they know we know it's a popular product which is another tick um another thing you can do wish.com hasn't got this option but on aliexpress has um we can go up here and search by orders. If you click on orders, it'll rank it by most orders to least. So again, it will just give you an idea. We can see straight away, look, on the top row, 860 orders. It's a popular product. People are interested in this product and they're buying this product. So hopefully that's given you like a, a general understanding of how you're going to do your product research. Go on to AliExpress, go on to wish.com, put your niche in. Scroll through pages and pages of product. I usually find it helps to have a pen and paper here. Just jot down the ones that get your interest and the price of them. And then go back to Amazon, find them on there, see what they're selling for. And again, just keep comparing them against these four points. And eventually you'll start to get an understanding yourself of what is going to be most profitable. Guys, so that's it for product research. I know it wasn't super in-depth. I must have recorded this section about three or four times and I just couldn't get it below 15 minutes. So I've decided to cut it at that. I know it wasn't super in-depth. I did say at the beginning though that because of the amount of content, I was gonna try and keep it general just to avoid the videos being too long and people getting bored. But 
if you do want me to do a video specifically on product research then I'm more than happy to do so if that's what people want if it is make sure you leave a comment below and if I get three people or more asking for it then I'll make sure it happens that being said we're moving on to the next step which is choosing a supplier dead easy step to do once you've picked your product just put it into the search bar at the top so we've picked a gold screw sharpener and what we're going to do is organize the product listings by the amount of orders so we just click on orders and then this organizes it by the amount of orders now the reason we've done this is just because if we if we start with suppliers that have had a high volume of orders then we've just got a better chance of finding one that's more established so take your mouse and if you hover over a product listing then it's going to show you the supplier name at the bottom so as we can see here McSports store and this one sports knowledge store so what we'll do is we'll go for a couple and I'll just explain and show you the things you need to be thinking about or considering so taking this first one then once it takes the home page the first place we're going to look is up here and straight away Aliexpress tells us that it's been open for over a year now avoid anything under a year then you just avoid running the risk of picking a pop-up store which Aliexpress is usually pretty good at finding these quickly and banning them, but just to play it safe, especially when you're first starting out, just look for a store that's been open for over a year. Next then, positive feedback, 99.6, this is very good. Avoid anything under 97, but as we can see here, 99.6, that's more than good enough. Another thing to think about is, just have a look at the products in general that they're selling and the amounts of orders and ratings they get. So if we have a look down here, a lot of them are golf products, which is a good thing because a, a store that tries to do a jack of all trades, as they call it, can sometimes be a bad thing. But as we can see, these guys sell a lot of golf products, so they must be knowledgeable about golf products or they wouldn't sell so many. And we can see the order numbers aren't bad which is a good sign and, and, and nor the product ratings either. So now there's another reason this is a good thing as well, because when you're building your store, obviously you want more than one product on there and you want as many products to be from the same supplier. Just so if someone comes on your store and thinks, oh, I want that, that and that and buys three or four things, if they're all coming from the same supplier, then you'll save on the carriage charge, which just makes things more profitable, which is always good. It was always handy for upsells and bundle offers as well. So generally speaking, they're the sorts of things you need to be looking out for. Like I've said, avoid anything under 97% or less than a year open. But generally speaking, guys, it just comes down to common sense. Any questions, obviously, then comment below and I will get back to you. Moving on then, the last point to this part one video, which is sample your product. This is very important to avoid committing to a poor product, a poor quality product, or a supplier that doesn't ship your products, just make sure you sample it first. You'll get an idea of the service they provide and the quality of the product. Drop shipping can be scaled very, very quickly. You can go from 0 to 50 orders a day within a couple of nights. So the last thing you want to do is be fulfilling two, 300 orders without even seeing the product first and then realizing it's poor quality, having to refund people. And it's just, just something that you want to avoid at all costs. And that's it guys. That is it for this video. Hopefully I've provided some value for guys. As I said at the beginning, any questions at all, even if you have a dozen questions, man, two dozen questions, just comment below. This is a small YouTube channel. I want to help you out as much as possible. Take advantage of me. Ask me as many questions as possible. I will answer them personally one by one. And if you want to see part two, then make sure you subscribe. That will be coming soon. In fact, let's say if this video can get five likes, only five likes, then I'll release part two. And that's it. Thanks for watching.